welcome to the sanctuary of Redeemer Lutheran Church in Owatonna, Minnesota. My name is Pastor Griebel, and this video is a recording of our service for Sunday, April 5th, 2020, Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. And so we begin with the Palm Sunday invocation and collect. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Palm Sunday Gospel is written in the 12th chapter of St. John. The next day, a large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in our opening hymn, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Lord of heaven, our King. 
Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We continue with our Lenten hymn, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. My burdens and my cares He 
from them all releases, he all my sorrows shares. I rest my soul on Jesus, this weary soul of mine. His right hand me embraces, I on his breast recline. I love the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, Christ the Lord. Like fragrance on the breezes, his name abroad is poured. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, part one. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered Jesus to him. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So Pilate, when he saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our next hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. and all 
lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. The company of angels is praising you on high, and we with all creation in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. A multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went. Our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. To you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. As you received their praises, accept the prayers we bring. O source of every blessing, our good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, part 2. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. 
and the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone over the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, Order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers? Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our sermon hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Of 
the sky Look down with sad and wondering eyes To see the approaching sacrifice Ride on, ride on in majesty Thy last and fiercest strife is nigh The Father on his sapphire throne Awaits his own anointed Son Ride on, ride on in majesty in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow thy meek head to mortal pain. Then take, O oh God, thy power and reign. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is Matthew chapter 27, verses 24 and 25. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. This is the text. Even in the midst of this pandemic, which is affecting the entire world, some people still have found some humor in things. Recently, I heard a little joke that went like this. Pontius Pilate would be the only one who would survive this pandemic because he's the only one who washed his hands. As we just read, when Pilate had finally decided to be done with Jesus, this riot was breaking out, he was losing control, he had tried everything, even releasing Barabbas, giving them a choice between notorious criminal Barabbas or Jesus. He had even heard from his wife having nothing to do with this righteous man because I have been troubled by him in a dream and he had found no evidence of anything worthy of putting Jesus to death, but things were getting out of control. He had to do something and he finally decided to wash his hands of it. And so by so doing, he tried to indicate that he was not going to take responsibility for the death of Jesus. But as a leader, you don't get that opportunity. If you're a leader, you have to take responsibility for things. And if you make a mistake and things go badly, you have to take responsibility for it. And even in a case like this with this pandemic, where it's something that our leaders hopefully haven't brought upon us, they still have to take responsibility because it's something that happened while they were in charge. That's what you have to do as a leader. And yet Pontius Pilate wanted to wash his hands of it and claim that it was not his responsibility. But we still blame him. He was the one who had the legal authority to put Jesus to death. And so we say in the creed that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. And so because he was the governor, he was the leader, he is the one who is responsible for Jesus' death, no matter how he tried to wash his hands of the ordeal. Even though the people of Israel, when he washed his hands of it, they claimed they would take responsibility, he's still the one responsible. The people answered after Pilate washed his hands. The people said, we'll take responsibility. Let his blood be on us and on our children. But still, it's Pontius Pilate who has to be the one who bears the responsibility for the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, of course, as we've heard over and over again throughout this pandemic, washing your hands is so very important to prevent 
anyone from becoming infected by this virus. In addition to covering your mouth, your face, and to keep social distancing, we've just heard those over and over again, how important it is, and especially do not touch your face with your hands, because that can cause trouble as well, and just keep washing over and over again. But we also know that no matter how, time, how many times we wash our hands or our bodies, nothing can wash away our sins except the blood of Jesus. Nothing can wash away sin, the virus of sin, except the blood of Jesus. And so when those Jewish people said, let his blood be upon us and on our children, they were right. Even though they were demanding the death of Jesus and they hated him and they wanted to destroy him and get rid of him, what they said actually was the truth and should be the prayer of everyone because we all need forgiveness. Let his blood be on us and hopefully on our children as well, passed on to the next generation because that's the only thing that can wash away our sins and take away the guilt and the punishment of our sins. Because on that cross, Jesus truly took all of our punishment upon him and removed the wrath of God, setting it aside, taking it all upon himself, as we heard earlier, where Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God forsook him because he was carrying our sins. And so God had to forsake the one who was so full of sin, our sins, on the cross. And then when we think of the hands of Jesus, what a blessed part of his body they were. When people, we are told in scripture, when people brought the sick to Jesus, he did not recoil from them and avoid them. It says over and over again, he placed his hands on the sick people and healed them. When people brought children to Jesus to have him bless them, it says he took them up in his arms and he put his hands on them and he blessed them. Then on the night when Jesus was betrayed, when he spent that last, last night with his disciples in the upper room celebrating the Passover with them and instituting the Lord's Supper, it says that Jesus took a towel and some water and he washed his disciples' feet he took his hands and he washed the feet of his disciples. And then later that night, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed. He folded his hands in prayer to his God and, he, and he, his Heavenly Father and he prayed that wonderful prayer, that prayer that we still should pray every day. Father, not my will, but your will be done. And then just a few moments later, Judas arrived with the soldiers, and Jesus' hands were tied up. It says he was bound by the soldiers, bound him, and then took him to the palace of the high priest for his first trial. And then as we heard in Matthew's account of Jesus' suffering, Jesus was taken out to be crucified. Initially, he started carrying his cross, but as we read, he must have been too weak to carry his cross with his own hands, and so they got a man by the name of Siren of Cyrene to carry the cross for him. And then when they got to Golgotha, they nailed those precious hands to the cross and lifted him up on that cross, and he hung there until he died, died on the cross for all of our sins. Then as we read, Joseph of Arimathea came forward after he had died, and wrapped him up in the linen cloth, placed him in his own tomb, rolled a stone in front of the entrance to the tomb. And then the Jewish people, thinking that he might try to pretend he rose from the dead, even posted some soldiers there to try and prevent any kind of fraud and any kind of idea that Jesus had risen from the dead. But we all know the rest of the story, that he did indeed rise from that tomb. And the amazing thing is, that after he rose from the dead, the scars from the nails of his crucifixion were still on his hands. 
He could have risen from the dead with a perfect body, with no evidence whatsoever that he had been crucified. But instead, he chose to rise from the dead, still with his body still showing those scars from his crucifixion to remind us what a blessed event that was through which our sins were paid for. He even showed those scars to doubting Thomas. Thomas, who said, I'll never believe that Jesus, had risen, had Jesus rose from the dead, no matter what his other fellow disciples told him, he wouldn't believe it. But then when Jesus finally appeared to, to Thomas and showed him the scars on his hands, instantaneously Thomas lost all his doubts and believed in Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. In view of what Jesus has done for us then, God wants us to use our hands to help others and even get them dirty if need be. Now, of course, we still want to keep our hands clean and avoid those germs of that virus because they are so deadly. But still, there are many ways in which we can reach out with our hands to help others to be the hands of Jesus in helping other people and serve them in whatever ways and needs that they have. We can also continue to fold our hands in praying for other people, and especially for those doctors and nurses who are on the front lines of this battle against this pandemic. Because as we've been hearing on the news, oftentimes when people are dying from this disease, their family can't come and visit them because if to do so, it would infect the family members as well. And so very often, the doctors and the nurses have to not only care for these people, but also stand in as their family members and loved ones as this virus is ravaging their bodies. And so let our hands also be folded in prayer for these people who are on the front lines of the battle against this pandemic. When you are a leader, you can't avoid taking responsibility for whatever happens while you are in office. And so Pontius Pilate, even though he washed his hands of the whole Jesus thing, still is the one who has to bear responsibility for condemning Jesus to be crucified. Thanks be to God that when it comes to our sins, Jesus took the responsibility on, our, on himself. There's no way he was going to wash his hands of our sins. Instead, he plunged himself into our sins by dying for us on the cross and completely taking our punishment upon him on that bloody cross to pay for all of our sins. And then he calls us to go out into this world and be his hands, to use our hands in service to others, to the glory of his holy and precious name. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the time when normally we would collect our offering. That is not possible, but we do invite you as God enables you and the Spirit moves you to send your offerings by mail here to Redeemer at the address that is on the wall behind me, 1054 Truman Avenue, Owatonna. You can also go to our website, RedeemerOwatonna.org, and give online through the website. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, you sent your Son Jesus to be the payment for the sins of the whole world. As our Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna, so hear our prayers as we come before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, as our Lord Jesus humbled himself by making himself a servant to all, so help us to have the mind of Christ, that we may serve our neighbor humbly in his name. Give us opportunities to serve and proclaim Christ in our words and actions, thus bringing glory to his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you did not desire the death of any sinner, but that all would turn in repentance to you. Bless the preaching of your gospel and the administration of your sacraments. Through these means of grace, convert those who do not yet know Christ and sustain those who face danger and opposition for the name of Christ. Bless our missionaries as they proclaim Christ in the far-flung places of this world and make them bold to declare your saving gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hold in your hand all the might of men. We ask you to give wisdom to our leaders, that they might govern with integrity and respect the rights of all. Bring to nothing the plans of those who oppose your will. Bless especially our nation and all who serve our people, our administrators, legislators, judges, and all who serve to uphold law and order especially those who guard our borders, our police, and any others who keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace to trust you during this time of distress. In your mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief and healing to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Sustain all of our health care workers, government officials, and medical researchers. Give them strength and protect them from all harm as they work to care for us and maintain order. Cause your people to respond with care and compassion to all who are affected by this catastrophe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by the Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn, closing hymn Thine Forever, God of Love. Thee, 
their rest. Save your guardian, heavenly friend, oh, defend us to the end. Thine forever, Lord of life, shield us through our earthly strife. Thou the life, the truth, the way, guide us to the realms of day. Thine forever shepherd keep, these thy frail and trembling sheep, safe alone beneath thy care, let us all thy goodness share. Thine forever, Thou our guide, All our wants by Thee supplied, All our sins by Thee forgiven, Lead us, Lord, from earth to heaven. Go in peace and serve the Lord.